on the road. We have about five hours or so ahead of us. We're going down to Sanger, Texas. Yep. Sanger, Texas. So Jake's performance. J Jake's performance. We'll get there at sometime around nine o'clock tonight, and then get up in the morning and head to Jake's and start getting uh, it put together. Dad's had the transmission. He's been talking about it for a long time, wanting it for a long time, but it has been ordered with Jake um, for about a month and a half now. We made plans, Dad made plans at the beginning of it that he wanted to come down and we were gonna help put it together. So it takes a long time to get parts in, but they're all finally in. So that's where we're headed now. But we actually had a couple problems, well, a big problem um, about a week or two ago. Jake found out that Reed was out of cases and it would be late August before he could get a Reed case in. And so dad made a post on Facebook because it was gonna be, well, it's gonna take him out of drag week. But uh, some friends on Facebook in Oregon actually sent dad his Reed case and dad's gonna replace it with his new one. And it's sitting back in the back. So it's making the trip with us. Um, get it down to Jake, get started in the morning, and then uh, we're going to dyno it and bring it home with us and put it in the Nova. Can't wait. Yay. We're in Denison, and so we stop for a quick jack-in-the-box. There it is. Quick jack-in-the-box stop. So, I'm going to try to find a Bucky's. Hey, if I can get jack-in-the-box, I'm getting jack-in-the-box. That's what we're having. Tacos. Got some carne and soda fries. Somebody got six tacos. That's not me. And I got two tacos. <laughs> we have made it. We are checked in. It's nine o'clock. Little tiny town. Small hotel. I got emails to do. So I'm going to go take care of that and then get up early in the morning and we're going to go build a transmission. have made it to Jake's. It's nine o'clock. We're ready to get started building a transmission. Except we can't find Jake. That's yeah, that's our eighty. He's doing this for her. Cool. cool. So for once we were early to something, so we beat Jake here, so we're gonna wait. We've been waiting like 15 minutes, so he'll get here and then we'll get started. But we're just wandering around for now. Fancy about this, I did put a uh, restriction in the pump. Even though you got the dumbbell, I still put a restriction in there with an eighth inch hole. Should be clean. And that restricts the fluid to the converter? Going to the converter. I got the uh, Chrysler overdrive tool out to, to be able to press it. I used the press to put it on so I could do it evenly. So what did they intend for you to do? Did they, they send the springs, but they don't send the... the they plate. sent this. They sent the plate, too, and I messed up the first one. So, they, so I got another one out of it. But just because you stuff. didn't use a full circle deal? Is that right, I started trying to do it on foot press, which the spring is so heavy that... Uh, I went and got the Chrysler thing out. Chrysler Overdrive has a spring in there that'll actually kill you. I mean, it's, there's warnings like, hey, don't do this without a, the right tool and the right press. This is actually pretty neat. We do something similar on our uh, stock center sports. It's got this, this bearing in there, the controls. It's got this race built onto the direct drum. So when it all goes together, it keeps it keeps it controlled so that you can so there's no drum track. wobble, no drum wobble. the way we we control that on uh, on like hers that we're building uh, it's got you use a flat bushing right a thrust yeah, washer yeah, it's it's a, oh it's bearing. a oh it's a pump bearing and you just tighten up your end plate so that it, it can't, can't wobble, wobble yeah. it's sandwiched in there Okay, so what are we, what are you getting ready to do right now as far as? trial assembling the rear gear train to uh, check the rear end play before we put the band in. Because after where your case is getting the band in is a little bit, a uh, little tricky. I like to get the rear end play real tight because you want to make sure you don't have more rear end play than you have front end play. Because if for some reason it's pushing the output shaft up in the car with enough power, everything's happening. 
just push it forward. You're actually gonna push this forward into the input shaft. Say you had 8,000 on the front, you had 12,000 on the back. You're actually negative four. Then you take your 12 up. You know, back shoving all the guts. Shoving the board, right. And play. needs just a little left. So they're gonna take it apart, put a different trim in it. Then, then we'll start assembling. Getting close to sealing it all up. What you're looking at right now? Just checking how much I got to cut for the front end plate. So you get front end plate set, and then what? What else do we have to do on this before we get to? Basically, machine the pump for the upgrade to a bearing, and, um, and we'll clean the pump up, reinstall it with a gasket, and uh, torque it down. And we'll be ready for the, the uh, valve body portion of it. So. If I'm not distracting you too much, tell me, kind of like you did a run down the other day, what, what all is, um, for the people watching, why, why is this special compared to? Uh, the factory, uh, factory thrust surface here at the front of the forward drum to the pump, it's not a real critical thrust surface because the, the oil will load this drum away from the pump, the lube oil. The factory uh, this open real quick. The factory uses a phenolic thrust washer. We're actually going to use a bearing in that spot. Okay. Just so it's roller ice. It's not super critical. It's just this, this high end of a build. We like to do all the little, all the little key steps. Okay. So we're going to get it wrapped up and then get ready for valve body and then get ready for dyno, right? Yes. Cool down. Just the polished parts. I don't know how anybody. I don't know. I don't know how anybody would set their in plays and add clutches to a drum or anything without having at least a, you know, a basic lathe like this. What is your What's your thoughts on performance transmission shops that don't have a lathe? It's not a performance transmission shop. <laughs> <laughs> One thing we told him when we saw the pre-production acrylic prototype is the factory cases have a problem with blowing this panel out right here on the side because that's the line pressure before it becomes from the pump to feed the manual valve on the valve body. That's a real big square square area there that's pushing out at potentially 300, 350 pounds in reverse. And so they'll crack right here on this corner and they'll blow out. About once a year, you'll put one in the dyno that you didn't catch that, and it'll only make 100 pounds no matter what you do. You're like, what's wrong with this thing? And I'll tell them, oh, pull the valve body off. And it'll be cracked right there. Uh -huh. When it gets under pressure, it pushes the, the side out, opens it up, and it blows all the pressure away. So that's one of the changes they made. They made quite a few changes. I mean, it's quite a bit heavier. They put uh, more, more, more meat in the back of the case back here in this area. They also opened it up. It's machined larger diameter so that the aftermarket gear sets will fit. So as far as the type of casting and the quality of the machine, read. Yeah, an aftermarket company is just a way better, yeah. way better product. It's impressive. And there's not very many 4L80 cases right now, is there? No, Reed is the only one making an aftermarket one at this time. But as far as like those being out in production, they're oh, not... That, that's a pre-production case. Pre-production case. They're, they're not available yet. Okay. Hopefully they will be soon. Do you have? Do you know any kind of estimated timeline on that, if anybody right. has questions? They sent or? the flyer out a few months ago. They said June, late June, and they, they missed that, I guess. <laughs> I haven't talked to them specifically about that case. I've got a couple of guys interested that want them. But it's, I just keep telling people, hey. So possibly sometime by the end of the year. Oh, I'll, I'll call it. By the end of the year. Okay. So we're checking in play here. Yes. And what is your ideal? I'd like to keep it under 10,000. Under 10,000. So what are we getting? We're at about four. Four. So good to go? Or? Good. My machine's good. <laughs> cool yeah. deal. Cool. I took a second to do some paperwork and emails and 
planning and stuff. But they've got that all wrapped up. We're getting ready to take a lunch break before we start the valve body. But they're doing a little bit of talk about a converter dump valve. So I'm going to try to get Jake to explain that um, for everyone to see. We've eaten so much Mexican food, but I'm okay with that. We're on a Mexican for lunch. And then the shop is literally just like right down the road. So go back, get stuff done. Food break now. So Jake just got the valve body installed in Dad's transmission. So I'm going to have him explain a little bit of the difference and why he went with this. On Dennis's transmission, we're using the grinder valve body. He already had this on his uh, previous build. Uh, I believe we got it for him a few years ago. The grinder valve body for serious competition cars or leaving on a pro tree is really it's, uh, it's unparalleled. Clean sheet design. It has a really nice, uh, really nice circuitry design, and it is an internal solenoid that uh, Steve Griner makes himself. That uh, the, the valving all happens right here, and it's a direct acting pressure release valve. So when it's bolted to the valve body here, and you bring the brake on, it actually opens line pressure to the brake port, and then when you exhaust, it closes the line pressure and exhausts the brake port right here. It all happens in mass span. It all happens right here on the middle of the valve body, so the, the circuitry is extremely short and quick acting. Um, I've been saying for years, this is the, the premier valve body. Uh, it's the same valve body other shops use, like m, &M Mark Mickey. Um, it's, it's limited availability these days, but they're, they're a really nice valve body. Um, this style of solenoid is, is really the key to the valve body. I've got a similar valve body that I've manufactured that we do here in house. It has similar circuits to the grinder valve body, but it uses the conventional solenoid that bolts on the outside of the case right here like this. And while it's a really good design, it's still it's not um, there, there's nothing that's gonna match the grinder for performance. You know, other than uh, but there's some, some other equivalent valve bodies out there now that uh, are basically a copy of the grinder and have a have a similar solenoid. Those are, are going to be a really nice piece to get. The availability is better. Uh, Extreme Automatics is, is, is one of the providers for those. We will probably be using those in the future as the grinder becomes less available. Um, a couple other companies that make a really nice valve body use solenoid similar to this that's screwed onto the valve body. You know, one form or another, it's got a block that holds a valve, and the solenoid is still direct acting. It's inside the pan, but it's Still not quite the uh, release time and, and just the quality of the grinder as far as the, the, how quick it's going to release. Nothing works like this does. Very cool. So. Okay, so I am with Ruth, who is a local O'Reilly's manager. Yes. Right? And she yes. comes to Jake's, I guess, fairly often to drop yeah, off. About once a week, I come by. My drivers come by every day. So, coolest O'Reilly's manager I've met so far. So, <laughs> she's got an O. One, o2 o2 Camaro uh -huh. so she likes high heels and low cars that was high heels and low cars that was the new term we just heard so <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was pretty cool video yes. worthy <laughs> thank you <laughs> when we bolt this on this the bolt is going to go through the solenoid block through the plate we're making into the valve body the rest of it we're going to have to make our own bolt Jake got dads all wrapped up except for a solenoid, so valve body on, but we're waiting on a solenoid, so we won't be able to dyno his today. But it's under control, so he's getting started putting, putting mine together. This trip is Mexican food. We've had talk, or Jack in the Box, Jack in the Box, Mexican for lunch, and now Chewy's Mexican for dinner. We are in Texas. <laughs> oh, look at all this cheese. Tex Mex. The whole bag of cheese. It's crazy. We have drove probably 20 minutes out of our way, but there's Bucky's. For anyone that doesn't know, Bucky's is a giant gas station with a billion pumps. And if there's anything you could ever think you might need inside the store, that's a gas station. Just wait. So, I am seriously so pumped about this. They're so cool. Like, who needs a gas station that big, but who would want to go to it?
Like, we drove out of our way. It's giant. Look at all those pumps. Guys, this is a gas station. You can't see the other end. Literally has everything you could possibly need. Today we get to finish putting it together, and then dye another stuff, and then come home. Hopefully. Hopefully it all goes as planned. <laughs> uh, just got an adjustable pressure regulator we, we put in the pump today so we can adjust the pressure on the dyno just by turning this uh, Allen head set screw down in the center of that. That replaces the stock boost valve assembly that uh, is typical on most, most turbo 400s. But on that, uh, the really high power builds, we like to use the adjustable pressure regulator so that we can tune the pressure in real easy without playing with springs and shims and fighting it on the dyno. So transmission just came from over there and it's over here. Getting ready to put it on the dyno and uh, get it tested that way, make sure everything works good and then it'll eliminate hopefully any more potential problems that we may, may encounter on drag week. So pretty, pretty exciting. Okay, so lunch break at In-N-Out, pumped about, and then... Get better. <laughs> yeah, block <laughs> me. And then, then we die now. Jake's pretty cool, he has a cool car. Needs to be polished. It's okay, you can't tell in the video. Pretty pumped. It's an understatement. We don't have good food. Super soft, just to make sure everything's okay, set pressure, um, then get that off there, and then Dad's is ready to go, and then we 